tonight on Legends. Do you want to see him put on a Secretariat show? If we knew it was his last race, then we would ask Kent that he can show off a little bit. You'd see 31 lengths? It would be possible. He can get beat. Not if he's in the gate. Not if he's in the gate, right? If he makes it there, it should, it should, be, histor it should be historical. You know, if Kent would not have come to that place that night, then we wouldn't have won in Dubai, Edgar would have stayed here, and Edgar would be in this position right now. Hard it is, the pressure of the media and everything. How are you holding up? Hey, I think I'm holding up good. I don't, uh, I don't feel the pressure. You happy these days? Very happy. Very happy. I used to, I used to worry about things, but now I don't, and that makes me happy. Does it make you a better trainer? Um, it probably does. I want to be known as a good horseman. Well, I, I would uh, if if I, if you're gone before me and someone wants to uh, fight about it, I'll stick up for you in a major <laughs> way, babe. <laughs> I'll put up a good argument. Well, babe. you know what? Also, Frank, is you've been around our stable. I mean, you even got to walk Big Brown to the track yesterday. Yeah. I mean, Sorry you, about that. I mean, they caught him on the Hempstead Turnpike. <laughs> he was he was back in 20 minutes. <laughs> he could deal with that. He probably <laughs> outrun a Corvette while he was out there. <laughs> Come to stop at a red light. <laughs> Right. Uh, but I mean, once you're around our stable and you, 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 you get a feel for our stable, it, it's a good feeling. It's a we really got good really feeling. good people in our stable, man. I tell you what, it's, that is definitely, uh, if I was to learn a lesson from uh, being around this whole situation, is that you keep the horses smiling. It makes me feel good when I know my horses are happy. Yeah. That is so important to me because I'm supposed to make them happy. I'm supposed to. You know, when you walk inside their home, they're supposed to invite you. Uh, some horses, they can't stand when some of these people walk inside their stall. They know they're gonna get treated yeah. not the right way. Our horses, I demand that they get treated the right way. I want the horses to have a good feeling about where they're at. You know, I've been lucky enough to hang around with you uh, in the last week or so, and I think that I really feel uh, that we're in the presence of uh, one of the all-time greats. Uh, I've never been around a horse, I know that. I, c I could even rank second to him. Well, I'm, I am sitting in a really good spot. I, s I see and feel what you do. It's, it's quite amazing. I mean, it's amazing. Now, he's in the stall that Empire Maker was in, and that means that he's over there in Bobby Franco's barn. We all know that with the throng of media that comes th through, Bobby's not exactly the kind of guy who's out there wanting to be a, a movie star every day of the week. He does things quietly, but it says a lot, I think, to uh, what he thinks of you to allow you in the barn knowing what was coming behind it. Is Bobby being like a bit of a father to you? Well, I'm not so sure I look at Bobby for a father figure. I, I kind of look for him as a father figure in the racing game. Mm -hmm. I think anyone would should be able to ask Bobby uh, questions about what might be happening with their horses uh, coming up to races or, or whatever it would be. Bobby's an excellent guy that you could throw something at and, and see how it bounces off of him because uh, he's just been through so lot and he's such a natural horseman. Um, well, why did he open the door to you? I guess he, he, you know, he knows that we're in a unique position with uh, trying to win a uh, triple crown and Bobby knew that, that we wanted to send the horse to Belmont from, from Pimlico to train him for the race, and I wouldn't think of anything else other than Bobby's barn. So I think that Bobby was very happy that we asked if we could go to, to his barn, and I think he's very happy trying to help out in any way that he can. Did you look upon your dad as similar sort of a horseman to uh, Bobby? Was your dad a natural type trainer that had just that natural touch towards horses? Dad had a natural feel for the game. Um, and Dad worked really hard at it too. I mean, Dad had it covered on both ends. When your father died, um, were you and him close at that stage, or was that in a part of your life where there was a bit of a strain between the two of you? Well, yeah, there was a strain the last couple years uh, of Dad's life. 
Um, what were you doing at that stage? That was strange. I was trying to get horses. I was trying, and I was doing pretty good getting them. I had, I can't remember how many horses I had at the time, 10, 15 maybe. But uh, the last couple of years, things weren't like they should have been with me and dad, mostly my doing. You know, things were the way they were and it wasn't gonna change and it couldn't change under dad's condition. He was in pretty bad shape. But, uh, you know, if that, if that never would have happened with Dad, I'm sure we would be seeing eye to eye today. I've no doubt about that, knowing you. Um, when they uh, hit the finish line, if you're lucky enough to uh, be in front, Dad will be in the forefront of your mind. He'll be there. Yeah, he'll be there. You kind of, you know, as uh, we can say about a lot of people in this world, including myself, lose our way every now and then. But you lost your way kind of in a major way. What made you change your mind? I don't know that I ever did change my mind. I think that as the day-to-day -day process goes and I'm working at it and trying to get horses and trying to build a stable, I think something happens to you at that point. I don't know that I woke up one morning and says, man, forget about this. I'm going to pay more attention to things. I don't think I ever had that type of attitude. I think it was just the day-to-day -day process, me being kind of formed into what I am right now. I think that's mostly what it was. Uh, you know, whenever I've done things wrong, I've never looked back on it and said, man, how could I do that? Why did I do something like that? Just did it and on to the next move. You know, I think just the process of just getting, you know, getting involved with the horses, the racing game, the clients, you know, trying to win races, that kind of changes you into, into turning, it turned me into the horseman that I am now, just the day to day to day stuff. Another little family member we need to mention is your daughter, Molly, and of course, Mom. Well, Mom's done an unbelievable job with Molly, but those two got along very, very good. I mean, she got Molly when she was like three, and she's held on to her up until a few months ago when Molly just wants to be with me. So, you know, now Molly's up here with me, and I'm, I, I, it's hard for me to deal with it because I'm up every morning and she's a very headstrong girl. And, um, you know, I gotta deal with it. She's got like 10 more days of school and I'm gonna have to find out what to do over the summer for school for next year. I gotta get somebody here to help me. Molly's mother was, uh, was murdered, is that right? Uh, what, uh, what happened there? Well, I, th I believe that it had to do with drugs or money, maybe both. She was living up in Schenectady. And she just got hooked up with the wrong people. She hooked herself up with them, I'm sure. And something about a safe in the house and, and the guys were supposed to come rob the safe. I think she was even help setting it up. I'm not sure about that. And you know, it just went the wrong way. They couldn't get inside the safe. And Denise is one person that would let you know what she thinks about things. She'll mouth off. Maybe that's what happened. They went out of bounds too far. I mean, uh, maybe they, I don't know what the hell they did, you know, but they killed her. Mm -hmm. And I, you know, when I got the news. Where were you when you got the news? I was in, I was at Aqueduct. How'd you, were you seeing her at the time? I was, no, no, no. I, I, I couldn't, I couldn't be in that spot anymore. Just, I tried, but when I could be going, going to work in the morning, she wasn't even around. She'd be out getting her drugs and I couldn't even go to work. Where was Molly then? Molly was with me, I couldn't leave the, the barn. I couldn't take her to the barn with me. Dad wasn't gonna go for that. So uh, I had to end the relationship as far as us living together. That was done. But when it actually happened, Frank, I, you know, they told me that they had killed Denise, but Molly was okay. Was Molly there? Yeah, she was there in the same room. They just took her off into the bedroom and one of the guys hung with Molly while the other guys beat up Denise. And uh, I felt like we dodged a bullet because why wouldn't they kill Molly too? Were you at the time trying to raise Molly yourself? Well, I would be sending them what money I could. I was in a bad spot myself, only had one or two horses. You know, I was not strong at the time at all. But I mean, I, you know, I, as soon as uh, it happened, I had, I had to go through a lot to get Molly out of childcare. Denise never put my name on the birth certificate, so I had to prove, number one, first I had to prove that I didn't kill her, the way the police treated me up there. And number two, then I had to prove that I was the real father, which was simple. 
and then they gave her back once they knew that it was me and I had nothing to do with whatever they were up to, you know. Two legs down, one to go. Oh man, I, I haven't touched the ground yet. These horses must be enjoying me as a rider right now because they're, 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 they're carrying a feather. I mean, I'm just high as a kite. Are you more or less confident of getting the third leg done? I think I'm probably in the same way, in the same spot when I was there. Uh, but I, it's completely different for me this year. I think uh, I was like a kid in a candy store. It was just all, I was just overwhelmed with joy the whole time. And um, it was like we had gotten the cake, we put a little icing on it, and we were just trying to get the candles. It, I had already won. It didn't matter what the outcome was. It didn't seem like it to me leading up to it. Down the stretch they come. It's real quiet to Sorbo, but on the outside, victory gallop, two sides and all. After I lost it, then it was like, holy cow, man, I'll probably never have another chance to do something like that. And with that being said, now, I understand. I mean, you're talking about immortal. You're talking about never being forgotten. You're talking about history. And uh, I'd sure like to make some. People would be a lot more shocked if this one was to get beat. I think you would be too, compared to Real Quiet. When he got beat, we were shocked because he seemed like the best through the Triple Crown. But he maybe wasn't the best two-year-old, maybe not the best early three-year-old. This horse has been the best since the moment he set foot on the race track. Yeah, it would, it would definitely be devastating, no doubt. I, I can't even imagine it. I don't even, can't imagine it. What would this Triple Crown mean to you and what you're thinking, you know, to associate, like how you've got here, or, you know, yeah, with your you son, know, I, Jacob? Or... Those, those visions, like a slideshow, they, they'll hit me at the wire. It happens every time. Uh, when I won the Derby, it happened. I started remembering my first start out of the starting gate, but this, this is completely different. The feeling I'm having right now when I'm not daydreaming the race is what I constantly do. I'm talking to you and I'm thinking about the race, you know? But when, for me, this, this year, it's gonna be all about my family. I, I'm gonna be thinking about my wife and kids and, and uh, the fact that our little one who was born with some symptoms is gonna actually be able to see this. I mean, he's, he'll never forget it. What is the situation with Jacob as far as his eyesight and everything? I mean, is this something that he may be losing his sight or he is losing? No, he, he is losing his sight. He has Usher syndrome. He was born deaf. Uh, he has some, cos cos some, some small cosmetic problems and his eyes are, uh, they're failing quickly and worse and worse and worse, and degenerating. We uh, so are we talking that it, this is possibly even the last classic race he could see his father ride in? He no, could I, I think, I think, no. No. No, he, he, he'll, he, he'll make it to adulthood. You said those things are going to go through my mind when I hit the wire. You do not believe that this horse is any possibility if he gets in that gate he can get beat? Not if he's in the gate. Not if he's in the gate, right? If he makes it there. It should, it, should be histor it should be historical. A lot of uh, people like to talk about Rick Dutra in maybe some sort of, uh, uh, that he's a black sheep, that he's uh, like a cagey character. What does he mean to you as like a, a friend, as a horse trainer? Well, he was first my friend, to tell you the truth. I mean, always invites me to his events that he puts on, uh, especially this uh, at Belmont time. Yeah, but Kent Airwalk well, got him in trouble. No. And, and then, and then he became an associate, and I was able to ride some horses for him. And and now we, you know, we've he's been able to spend a lot of time with him. And I watch him; he's meticulous. Mate, what's with he the like horse. to ride for? Oh, he's a dream to ride for. The guy, he says, you you looked at it, you know what you're doing. Yes, sir. Go get him. Go win me a race. You know. How many of an entourage are you going to have? 110 right now. 110. And did you hear about? Uh, the IEAH uh, stable about uh, how they're making 100,000 big brown towels to the first 100,000 people through the gate here. When big brown, if he makes it in that gate, when you turn for home, there's a possibility you're gonna be looking at 100,000 big brown towels, big waves. That could be a pretty special feeling. I, I think so. I, I think to have the world, uh, the world, a world of love pulling for him. I'm just very happy and humbled to be part of the whole situation, be part of the team. Uh, feel blessed that IEH has chosen me to ride this this freak. He's a freak, and I'm 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 just 
very lucky to be associated with the whole thing. They seem to be real winners, the IEAH. They are as good a losers yeah. as I could have ever been good. around in my life. That's where I was going. You said they were great winners. You, tell, you can tell a whole lot more about a person when they get beat and what, you know how they treat you. And it's the same class, same class, just like appreciative of the win. They'd be appreciative for you coming out and giving your a gallant effort. Well, my friend, you owe me nothing in this world because it's right here. <laughs> yeah. uh, me and you got the job done in the Breeders' Make Cup, and uh, you know what? Uh, I feel it's going to happen, and I just wish you the best, brother. And I hope it does. Thank you. Thank you. How'd you come across Big Brown? Uh, Big Brown freaked in his debut. In the meantime, Big Brown is turning it into a runaway. Ivorone wanted to buy him. Mike Ivorone from IEAH. Yeah. Is that the only Ivorone you know? Yeah. Well, there's a lot of them floating yeah. around, too. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but, you know, it got into uh, who's going to get the horse because somebody was going to buy him. Yeah. I think the biggest reason why Paul decided to go with IEA is IEA let him in. Mm -hmm. They let him stay in. Darley wanted to buy him out, and Paul wanted to stay in. It's a good thing he did. Yeah. Yeah, really he's having the time of his time life. Time of his life, no doubt about it. Uh, As, uh, shit, how did Kent DeSormo end up on the horse? Well, Benny the Bull won a big race for us, the Sunshine Millions, in Florida. And we had had everything set up to go to one of my clients' dinner place. We all went in there. It was like 50 or 60 of us. And then all of a sudden, later on, Kent and his wife came in and we made room for him. There wasn't anything that was planned. And the next morning, Ivorone says, Rick, you gotta do me a favor. We gotta let Kent ride Big Brown. And I says, well, Mike, I mean, you know, that's all fine with me, but you know, Edgar's been breezing the horse. He loves him. Uh, you're gonna have to handle this here. He, uh, this was Edgar's mount and you're gonna have to deal with it. I'm not gonna deal with it. I'm going to name Edgar until you straighten it out with Edgar, because Edgar's been good to us, and there's no reason to treat him like that. I, I did lay one thing on Ivorone. I says, Mike, you know, Edgar's going to stay with us. I says, how do you know Kent's going to stay? He's riding a lot of good ones for Billy Mott. He's in demand right now. So Mike got them to agree, no matter what, no matter what, he was going to ride Big Brown every race. I says, OK, well, I can live with that. That's OK. That's how it came about. He's not going to stay with Big Brown every race. Does Edgar still come by and give him a carrot? Edgar comes, he keeps close tabs on Big Brown, yes. I feel bad, but you know what, also, that was the same day of the Florida Derby, and I don't believe any jock in the world would have won those races in Dubai except Edgar. He gave those two horses unbelievable rides. And if we would have kept Edgar here and rode him on Big Brown, we would not have won those races. So it worked out good for Dutrow. Yeah, no yeah. Doubt. It what really about, did. Uh, I feel bad about the Egger thing because he got taken off St. Liam, too, for the classic, and it wasn't my move. I didn't like it, but if I would have challenged, they would have took the horse from me, you know? Yeah, yeah. Same thing here with Big Brown. If I would have challenged and stood my ground, I wouldn't be training Big Brown. So the owners do play a big part of this game, and you know what? They own the horse, and it should be, it should be up to them on what they want to do and what they don't want to do. A lot of people send me horses and they just completely leave me alone. Mike Ivorone is one of them. He doesn't get involved that much. You know, if Kent would not have come to that place that night, then we wouldn't have won in Dubai. Edgar would have stayed here and Edgar would be in this position right now. Mm. And people like to say, you know, oh, well, if it wasn't for the drugs, if it wasn't for the, the medication, what's he using? I mean, what do you have to say to that? Well, are they talking about on myself or with my no, horses? No, your horses. No, I, I know you're medicated. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well, um, I don't put much into it. I don't, it doesn't bother me in any kind of way, Frank. I mean, I, I've heard it for years and years. I would be reading stuff about what they are accusing me of or whatever. It's, I don't put much into it. It's not the way I was brought up. It's not what I revert to doing just to win a race. You, Alan Jerkins, a long time ago when I came to New York and I was working for a couple trainers and Oscar Barrera was winning nine races every other day. I said, Chief, what's going on here, man? He says, Rick, don't pay no attention to that. 
You stick with your good blocking and your good tackling, and you're going to win your games. Mm. Don't worry. Well, like, he meant, you know, the sound yeah, reasons to get you there. You know, IEA8 seems to have been become like, you know, two years ago, they were kind of a... They were noticeable. Noticeable. Now they're on front page. Why do you think they're on the front page? Well, they, they go out and they buy the, the runners. So they're players, man. And, you know, I'm not going to do good with all the horses that they send me, but if the horses allow us to, we're going to do good with, with most of them. And right now we're just, we're just in, in a zone. I mean, Benny the Bull, Kip DeVille, and Big Brown, to be able to train those three horses at the same time is just, it's great. I think all three of them are on top of their divisions. It's, it's a wild thing that I'm going through. Your arrogance, as people kind of say, where you say, babe, this horse is going to win. You bet a lot of money. Some people say, oh, he should shut his mouth uh, because, you know, it can happen from saying that uh, I'll see you in the winner's circle or whatever like that. Do you say it because you're arrogant or why do you say that sort of stuff? Well, number one, the, the reporters ask me questions about it leading up to they want to hear that. And I just make my reporters happy. <laughs> I love the way you say that, Dave. <laughs> They're real happy behind that fence. Well, the reason why I say it, Frank, is because this is what the horse is telling me, what I'm seeing from him. Mm -hmm. I mean, I'm not going to be saying that if he's in a really, really tough spot and there's a bunch of runners all around him. So far, we haven't seen that with Big Brown. I mean, you've seen some question marks, possible horses that might step up and challenge him. But once the race gets started and into the race, no one comes to challenge the horse. Well, now in the third leg next Saturday, you got a horse called Casino Drive, who, I mean, it's an unbelievable story because the dam, better than honor, has produced the last two Belmont winners. Going for the third Belmont winner, there's two unbelievable stories that could come out of this race. How worried are you that the other story is going to come out? The other story is not going to come out if our horse gets there the right way. The, but it's an unbelievable story that, that, that what you're saying about the, the mommy throwing three Belmont winners in, or even two, even one is great. Two of them is unbelievable. Yeah. Three of them is like hitting the, the lottery in Jersey for 900 million. Three Belmont winners or Woody's five Belmont winners, which is a better accomplishment? I'd have to say the mayor. I'd have to say the mayor, you know, she only, has, she only has one baby a year. One baby a year. Woody got sent 50 babies a year or more, mm -hmm. and the best ones. What is the immediate future for Big Brown? I've talked to Ivorone, and we're heading towards the Travers and the Breeders' Cup Classic. How would you feel about taking on the likes of Curlin? I would love for that day to come. I actually, I, that would be, I mean, I want to get through this Belmont, and then our next target is Curlin if they show up. Would, if they suggested, which it has been a little bit of match race, would that be anything? That would have to be dealt with after the Breeders' Cup. Both horses have enough time where they can run one more time if, if before, you, before they both get retired. If you had to pick a uh, racetrack at a distance for a match race with Carlin, where would it be and at what distance? It, we're talking that, that most likely, if it would happen, it would be sometime in December. So uh, I wouldn't want it to be on the inner track. At Aqueduct, <laughs> no. What that? Uh, even though I might pick that because it favors speed. Yeah, uh, right. I'd want it to be on the inner track. <laughs> yeah, you're going to go for the inner track. That's no, great. I mean, yeah. I, would, I would love for that day to come. I really would. Uh, it would be just great for racing. As long as these two horses ended their regular seasons the right way, it would be a match that everybody in the game would want to see. And I would want to see it too. What would it be? that you had to say, well, I think that this is what's most special about him. Well, his mind has got to be like up there near the top. He's got an incredible mind. Uh, there's also something that I, I don't see, but I know it's there, which is his talent. I mean, he was just born to, to do what he's doing. There's no way in the world anybody can put what he's got inside of him. He was born with it. Do you want to see him put on a secretariat show? If we knew it was his last race, then we would ask Kent that he can show off a little bit. But it's not his last race. What's showing off a little bit? What would you think? Let the horse run. Let him run? Yeah, let him run. Because he hasn't let him run yet? He's let him run in instances in his races. Just instances. Not asking him. When he's got the race in his pocket, he has not drilled down and asked him for run. 
which is one of the reasons why I feel so confident going into our next race. I know we have plenty left. Let me ask you this. If it was his last race and Kent was to ask him and put on a show, what would you say if you to predict that show would be about? It would be about him breaking good, going to the lead, and widening at every step. That's what it would be about. You'd see 31 lengths? It would be possible. It would be possible. It's not necessary, though. <laughs>